What is up, brothers and sisters? Ah, you gotta love that funky old school beat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hope you're having a great day. Season two, episode two of the Mitch Gray Show. Thank you, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you have not subscribed yet and you're just checking this out, maybe from a link that someone sent you, make sure you subscribe to the Mitch Gray Show anywhere you listen to podcasts. And if you have subscribed, thank you very much for doing that. You can also check out our previous uh, episodes, um, episode one of season two a few weeks ago, and then also all the episodes of season two. Make sure you download those, and uh, maybe while you're running or, or working out or driving to work or just uh, taking some time to relax, you can listen to these shows. So great topic today. We have a great topic selected for the rest of season two. Um, we've got some great guests lined up, and I'm going to be announcing those guests very soon. And so, yeah, again, make sure you subscribe. Um, I would also invite you to go check out the new book, The Gathering Place. You can find that on Amazon. Uh, you can also find that at Barnes & Noble, lulu.com. You can check out my website, mitchgrade.me, and purchase an autographed copy. So please go grab the new book, The Gathering Place, and uh, be inspired. So yeah, really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. Okay, today's topic. Today's topic. By the way, before I announce today's topic, that reminded me, make sure you follow us on social media, at M. Gray Media, that's Twitter, Instagram, uh, and Facebook, because each week is a topical week. We've kind of taken a little bit of a turn in organizing our content, and that was combined with uh, season two of The Mitch Gray Show. So each week on uh, social media, on the podcast, um, as we get the website rebuilt, we're going to be including a blog there. On the blog, we're having a topic for every week, and that way you can uh, check things out, look at the posts on social media, uh, check us out on IGTV for all those episodes, and uh, obviously listen to the podcast. So, yes, the topic for this week. I love it, I love it, I love it. I've been sitting on this topic for a while. I think I always say that. I think I say that every episode. I've been sitting on this topic because it's true. Most of the topics that I have selected, um, I kind of I kind of pick them and kind of mull over them and figure out what I'm going to do, and then I create the content and decide if I think it's good enough or not, and then once I decide it's ready to go, we launch it. <coughs> Excuse me. So this week's topic is: everyone is an atheist, or should be. Everyone is an atheist or should be. Everyone is an atheist or should be. So let's define a few things before we get into this topic. If you look up the definition of atheist, what you'll find is the lack of belief in God or gods or the disbelief in a higher power or in God. So the lack of belief in God or gods or the disbelief in a higher power or in uh, greater beings or gods. So that word atheist is a very interesting word because it's one of those words, uh, they're, they're what I call line in the sand words. It's almost like that we have these words in our vocabulary that a portion of people draw a definitive line in the sand and say, when it comes to this word, you are either on this side of the line or that side of the line. The problem with definitive line in the sand words is life is rarely specifically definitive, right? Like, like you can take a certain topic and someone may say, well, I stand on this side of the line on that topic, but you can take a similar topic and because of experience and upbringing and knowledge, someone may say, well, now I'm on the other side of the line. And it's not just when you're comparing different people. It happens to us in life, right? In our upbringing, we are taught by knowledge that we cannot control. So up until you're like, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, you almost cannot control the knowledge that is implanted in you. You almost cannot control 
what you learn. Why? Because it's hard for you to read or you cannot read. It's hard for you to write or you cannot write. Um, Now, it's changing a little bit, which is interesting, because back in my day, and I'm not that old, but back in my day, we didn't have technology like we do today. We didn't have cell phones and iPads and computers. And for the people that did have computers, you didn't find them in most households, right? In fact, I didn't even have one in school all through my elementary and high school years. We didn't have a computer. What's interesting now is I see young children, two, three, four years old, that can already learn how to manipulate and navigate a phone, a computer, an iPad, or another type of tablet. These these babies, these toddlers, actually know how to manipulate and navigate that piece of technology, and it's actually kind of miraculous. The problem with that is, is young human beings who do not understand how to filter knowledge are all of a sudden allowed to navigate some sort of knowledge. Now, that knowledge is usually found in the format of watching cartoons or playing games. But there's always little bits of knowledge in those platforms that you may or may not want as a parent that child to learn. So it's changed a little bit. But for the most part, let's just talk in generalities. For the most part, until you're 10, 11, 12 years old, it is very difficult for a young person to control the knowledge they are given. Basically, you grow up in a household. Maybe some of you grow up in multiple households. And so as a young person, you just hear things or your parents teach you things. So your your parents or your guardians or your grandparents, they teach you how to talk. They show you uh, the color of a stop sign, and they tell you that that stop sign is red. So they teach you how to relate vocabulary to explaining and describing something. (coughs) Excuse me. And you cannot control what knowledge is inputted into your mind. As you grow, you can now control knowledge. So what happens when you start gaining knowledge? In the beginning, when someone gives you knowledge, you basically are reliant upon that knowledge. And so you believe what you were told to believe. As you grow older and you can now control the knowledge that you are given, not only can you control that knowledge, you can now start relating that knowledge to experience. So now all of a sudden you're going from not only being given knowledge to being able to attain knowledge at your own uh, expectation and speed to now relating that knowledge to your own experience. And so what does that do as you are relating knowledge to your own experience? You are now forming your own thought patterns. You're now leaving the thought patterns that were kind of bestowed upon you uncontrollably, and now you're forming your own independent thought patterns. This is what I like to call shifting the definition of things. So we began with the word atheist, and we said that the definition of atheist is someone who lacks belief in God or gods. I want to broaden the definition of the word atheist, and I want to say that the word atheist actually means the disbelief in something. The disbelief in something. So as you're a young child, you're bestowed knowledge out of your control, and so you kind of believe the things that you're told to believe, and then as you grow, you get be able to control the knowledge input, and you're now able to relate that knowledge to experiences that you've been able to have. And as you grow older, you're able, you're able to choose what experiences you have in life. And then you're able to adapt and evolve your knowledge and your idealism now related to the experiences that you've been able to choose. What happens in expanding that knowledge and wisdom and experience is we then become atheist to our former way of thinking. And I'm here to tell you that as your life continues, you actually grow possibly even more atheistic toward your former way of thinking. We will call that for now the maturation process of human nature. (coughs) And it's not even human nature. It's actually all life, right? So as an example, uh, one of my office mates actually has a cactus. 
and he offices in the front of our building, and there's a full, basically a full front wall of windows in our building, so we get a lot of sunshine. And this cactus does interesting things, right? As this cactus grows, it actually pushes toward the sun. And so ever, about every two weeks, we call it the bent cactus, because this cactus, instead of growing straight up, has now pushed toward the sun. What has this cactus done? It has actually evolved its processing and its growth and its ability to grow. Normally, this cactus should be a straight-up grower. Instead, now it pushes toward the sun because it knows where the optimum life level is. Isn't that amazing that a cactus can actually adapt and change to its optimum functioning level? So straight up cactus by nature becomes bent cactus so that it can get the most sunlight that it can possibly get. I find that so crazy and miraculous. And if a cactus can do it, don't we do that as humans? We find this knowledge, we gain this experience, maybe our parents or guardians or grandparents, maybe they taught us great things, maybe they taught us mythical things, maybe they taught us things that we've learned were just garbage. And it's okay to come to those decision points in a respectful and honorable manner. So then what happens is we start relating this new knowledge, this new sunshine, this new optimum way of living, and we start saying, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Although I admire and I respect and I honor what my family taught me, I'm learning that that is not my optimum health point of living. So I'm now atheistic toward my former way of thinking, maybe the way my family thinks. I'm now atheistic toward those schools of thought, and I have found my own path. And the interesting thing is, most likely in 10 years, you will probably be atheistic toward your current way of thinking. And in 20 years, you will probably be be atheistic toward your 10-year-from-now way of thinking because life happens. Life evolves, things change, experiences change us, mistakes change us, successes change us, new friends and new environments and new opportunities, they change us. And guess what? That is perfectly okay. We're finding the sunshine, right? So we have to take inventory of where we currently are. And although we're striving to be fully present in this moment, in this time, we are also very, very excited about finding the sunshine of the next moment. And although we are going to stay present in this moment, we are also very excited about what is coming and what might take place over time. And so not only are we atheistic toward our former way of thinking, but we're also atheistic toward our future way of thinking because we're going to continue to evolve and to grow. We're going to continue to mature and to change. We're going to continue to expand our circle of relationships and to open the doors of opportunity so that it just adds to the sunshine of our life. Much like my friend's cactus, we're going to push toward the sunshine. So everyone is an atheist or should be. Or should be. Let's talk about the or should be part, right? I remember quite a few years ago, and actually it was over a decade ago, almost a decade and a half ago, I was at a job, and it was actually when I was in uh, full time ministry. And I remember uh, there was this like big scuttlebutt in the denomination that we were involved in about these uh, agents of change, is what they called them, right? These change agents. Really what was happening is there was a movement of preachers and pastors and leaders in this denomination that were saying, okay, hold on a second. At some point, we have to evolve in our thinking. At some point, we have to say things can't stay the same because things change. Things evolve. People evolve. Our awareness levels grow and they expand. 
And so leadership, certain parts of leadership in this denomination were saying, we cannot continue to do things the way we've done for 150 years or whatever, whatever it was. But yet there was this other portion of this denomination that, that all of that tradition had become the sacred cow. All of that tradition had become the only reason they were hanging on to doing what their parents had done and their grandparents had done and their great-grandparents had done. That was holy to them. There's something interesting about things being sacred and things being holy. There's, there's two schools of thought on this. The first school of thought is, is that if something is sacred and if something is holy, then we have to keep it the same for eternity. Brothers and sisters, that is a really, really immature way of thinking. Something can be very sacred and very holy, yet evolve and change. In my family, I love the lessons that I was taught as a child. I love the lessons of being a servant and of loving and accepting all people. I love the lessons of sacrifice and giving. I love the lessons of family being together and cooking meals together and working really hard together. I love those lessons, and I hold those lessons sacred and holy but it doesn't mean that when I raised my kids, I took them through the same scenarios to learn those lessons. No, I raised my kids. My wife and I raised our kids. I interacted with my family the way I saw best, with the best sunlight and the best compassion and the best humility. And it was a very different style than my parents had but I still hold what my parents taught me very holy and very sacred. So back to my story, what was happening is there was a portion of the leadership of that denomination that was saying, no, 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 we have to evolve. We can still hold our traditions honorable and sacred and holy, but still allow them to have their day and time, and their day and time is in the past. Yet there was another part of that denomination that was saying, no, 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 this is why we exist Really, what they were saying was, we exist for tradition only. That's not being fully present now. And so that segment of this denomination, they labeled these other leaders and these thought uh, provokers and these futuristic thinkers, they labeled them agents of change or change agents. And I'll never forget, I had a man come to my office one day and he said, Mitch, I just have to ask you, I want to look you in the eye man to man and ask you, are you a change agent? And oh my gosh, if I regret something, I regret the answer I gave him because I didn't understand what was happening. I was too young and too immature. I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand the courage that I really should have had at the time. And I said, no, 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 I'm not a change agent. I just want to be a person that loves people. Really what I wished I would have told that man is, yes, I'm a change agent because I don't believe anything stays the same. I don't believe anything stays the same. I think everything evolves. I think everything matures. I think the things in the physical, the traditions and the heritages, those come and go. They're kind of like the water running down the mountain. One season you can go up the mountain and the water has taken one path. And the next season you can go up the mountain and the water has taken another path. And it just kind of clears out and goes as it needs to go. That's how nature works, and I believe life works that way. If I could go back, I would tell this gentleman with respect and honor, yeah, you better believe I'm a change agent, because if we are the same in 100 years as we are today, something is wrong. Something is wrong. I can hold my traditions very near to me. I can treasure the lessons I was taught as a child. I can treat them with respect and honor. But at some point, we have to mature and we have to grow. And it doesn't mean that we're spitting in the face of all that's sacred and honorable. It doesn't mean that we're spitting in the face of the people that taught us those beautiful things. But what it means is we're walking our own path. And no one else has the right to tell you how to walk that path. There are millions of paths, brothers and sisters, we're all surrounded by the same beautiful mountain of life. We can all hear the same river 
of life that's running through the mountain. We're just all going to take a different path. Some of us like to go straight way up the mountain, right? There's, there's some of us that are the trailblazers, and we love to just go straight up the mountain. And there's some of us that are the explorers, and we love to take the long way around because we want to discover, and we're curious, and we want to explore. There's some of us that are the campers, and we like to go for a few days and then spend a few days resting and relaxing. There's some of us that are the ones that love to play in the water or build swings. It takes all different paths, and that is beautiful. And there's many that have come before you and I, and they took their path. And when we look at their path, we honor that path. When we see their belief systems, we honor and we hold dear those belief systems. Because if it wasn't for those belief systems, good or bad, negative or positive, we wouldn't be where we are today. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the voices of positivity and the voices of hope are growing louder and stronger and more in number. It's just that you need to listen. You need to listen. Let me encourage you with this. If you find yourself not atheistic towards your former way of thought, then my question would be, what are you doing to invest daily in yourself? Are you surrounding yourself with new opportunities, with new friends? Not that you're going to throw the old ones away unless you need to, unless their negative influence on you is hurting your life. But are you, are you expanding the circle of people around you? Are you expanding the circle of opportunities? Are you building new threshold?